Okay, let's get started. So, welcome to another Gunbound M tutorial. Today we'll be um, talking about the tank Drone Beat. So, Drone Beat is one of, if not my number one favorite tank right now. Uh, I think he's really uh, quite fun to play, quite flashy if you like going for. Uh, Kind of the, the nice looking shots. Um, <laughs> people that know me will know I'm a former um, Smash Bros. Melee player. I like to compare Drone Beat to Captain Falcon from Melee. He's kind of, he's not the best in every situation, but when you pull him off right, he's very satisfying. So let's look at his stats. Um, his attack is kind of uh, average. His health is quite low. It uh, maxes out at 659. So that's only like um, yeah, that's only like 10 more than the lowest HP tanks like Photon and uh, Boomer and those guys. So he's really quite fragile. Um, what he is good at is climbing. He's got a 95 climb. And he can actually move really far as well. So he's got really good mobility. Um, he's able to get out of holes quite easily. Uh, and he can move around a lot. Now, let's get into talking about his, uh, his weapons. Okay, so drone beads weapons all involve firing a marker, which is then followed by the drone. So you see there's two lines, right? You've got the green line, that's his marker, and then the white line is the path of the drone. For all three of these weapons, they fire the same marker, uh, including his SS, but I can't show you that right now. I don't have SS. Um, but uh, it is the same green marker and the uh, the difference between the three weapons is just in um, how the drone fires uh, so the the drone is like it's not a it doesn't follow the normal shot physics it uh, it kind of just um, it's like attracted to the marker um, so it, it kind of uh, tries to get to where the marker is but it starts off going in a, in a like for S1 it goes up higher than the marker and it loops back around for S2 it kind of shoots out to the side and then it tries to reach the marker the difference between these two is you have one is the direction in which the drone fires at the beginning so as you see, the S1 kind of fires up, uh, S2 kind of fires to the side or behind. And then the other thing is how quickly the drone can turn. So it's almost like it's like a, a race car where it tries to reach the marker, but it can only turn so much at a time. So the S1 kind of starts off. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll use a different map because I can't see the top of this of the flying arc. Let's use a better map where I can, we can see more. So the S1, yeah, you see how it doesn't really curve that much at the beginning. Like around, like around here, it kind of, it's going mostly straight. And then it starts curving more as it flies, the, the longer it flies. Um, so that that's kind of just how S1 works. It starts off not being able to turn that much, but then um, it, it gets like, you know, if you think of it in terms of, of like a racing game, it starts off with very poor handling. Like you can't really turn very quickly, but then it gets better and better. Whereas the S2, it starts off with really good handling uh, right from the beginning. So it's able to track the the marker much better. Um, and it also doesn't, you know, doesn't fly up as high. 
So, uh, so which weapon do you want to use? Well, most of the time you want to use S1 because it goes higher. So that allows you to you know charge your SS. Um, the times when you'd want to use S2 is uh, um, you see like the S1 makes quite a large loop. You can reduce the size of that loop if you aim lower, but it uh, there's like a limit to how low you can aim, how how close of the target can be that you can hit with S1. If the target is uh, any closer than that, you pretty much can't hit it with S1. You'd have to change to S2. And S2 can pretty much hit anywhere, so long as you have at least some space around and above you. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, generally you want to be using your S1, simply because drone beat is... Uh, is, is primarily used, I would say his strength is his SS. His attacks, they do decent damage, but um, like the amount of damage they do is highly variable depending on how um, how well you hit the target, like how close to the center. So that's he's like other machine types in that way. Like if you know if you play armor, you're probably aware that if you hit them, you know, at the, at the side, it's only going to do like at most 200 damage, if not even. But if you hit him in the center, you can do like 230, 240, right? It's the same thing with drone beat. Um, like a side hit would only do like like one sec 170 damage at the lowest. I guess I can show you. Um, so if I want to aim like to the side of the neck. Uh, that did a decent damage, but I think that this is in training mode, so everything gets bonus damage. Um, in non-training mode, if you uh, hit the center, you can it pretty much maxes out at 240, uh, and that's for both shot one and shot two. Um, both shot one and shot two deal the same amount of damage, um, but it, it can be quite difficult. To both get the super sky as well as hit the center of the target simply because when you're shooting so high uh, it, the angle in which it comes down at is very shallow so like you're, you're it's there's not much surface area for you to like any minor adjustment will change where it hits by a lot um, so he, I wouldn't like he's not really used for just doing damage, although he can be. If you if you if you forego sky shot, you know you can quite easily hit the center because um, the S one doesn't really um, the wind doesn't really affect it all that much. Like, uh, you can pretty much just aim directly at the target and you'll hit uh, more or less the same spot if you're shooting low. If you're shooting high, however, you know. Um, Remember what I said about how the um, the shots, like the drone, it has like a turning radius, and um, that gets better and better the the, the more the longer the shot stays in the air. So, like, pretty much all along this path up until like there, it's it's already turning as much as it can, so it's not really being affected by the wind. Once it comes on the, the return, where it starts like making a straight line to the marker, like like around here and, and there, that's when it starts like, because the marker is affected by the wind, um, it's usually that part that gets affected by the wind. So if you're, if you're shooting low, it pretty much has no opportunity to be affected by the wind. Although there is, there's a minor effect, I won't say there's none. Usually, like up and down winds will affect how far it goes. The upwind will make it go farther, and downwind will, will make it go uh, not as far. That that's about as much as I've noticed. The left and right winds, if you're just shooting at low, with S one, it pretty much doesn't affect it at all. Okay, so yeah, so that's S one. Usually, you want to um, like. There's many. You can like move the marker a lot and 
you can shoot it high or shoot it low. It doesn't really change the flight path that much. Like, like the end part does, but uh, the beginning part doesn't really change at all. See? But I would generally try to like shoot like kind of like this, where the marker is near the, uh, quite close to you. And then you, because uh, this allows you to, um, to get a steeper angle for the shot coming down. So it's a bit easier to get a good hit this way. Um, yeah, even though you're going for SS, you still want to, you still want to get strong centered hits. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that, I, yeah, I guess that's S1. S2, the situations that I would use it is like, if you're, um, if the guy's like hiding, right? So like, let's say the guy was, um, let's say the guy, w like, let's say there was like a hole and he was in the hole there, then your S1, you can't like, you would end up hitting the land uh, behind him rather than hitting the target, right? There's no, there's, I guess you could shoot it low, but again, there's a limit to how low you can shoot with S1. S2, you kind of have a, um, you have a lower trajectory, right? So like if the if the knack was where I pointed, like he was in a hole here, I would hopefully try to land like there uh, and then use my S2 because then I could, like you can go straight down into the hole. So the, the, that's the situation where I would use S2. The S2 gets more affected by the wind simply because it follows the flight path of the marker more closely and so when the marker is um, being pushed by the wind uh, the drone similarly gets affected um, yeah so let me uh, let me talk about SS so the the part <laughs> the reason why I use drone beat is for the SS it's like it it's really satisfying to get an SS off um, and you can do a lot with it. For one, it does a it does a quite a good chunk of damage. Like it's about as strong as armor's SS. Uh, and then there's also fire projectiles, so it really uh, benefits a lot from like lightning cloud or Thor cloud. Lightning with lightning cloud, you can add like an extra two hundred damage to it, just simply from the lightning strikes. So I've done like upwards of 700 damage with uh, with the, his SS, which is quite a bit stronger than even Armor's SS. Um, the other thing you can do with it is you, you can bunge with it. And I'll, I guess I'll show you that later. Um, or maybe I can show it now. Uh, so the, yeah, uh, the, the, the way that you would bunge with it is you would shoot it like past the land and then have it loop back uh, underneath the enemy um, and I guess I'll need to talk about how, like the looping behavior of, uh, of his shots so all of his shots right like once they reach the marker they kind of fly off in a they, like they try to continue going but then they're attracted back to the marker again um, and so they kind of like make loops around where the marker is and then which direction that they loop in is actually dependent on the direction of the wind. Um, maybe this is not it. Let me, let me show you on the, this side here. So, so you see where the marker is right there? Um, right there, right? So it goes up, up to the left, and then it comes down onto the marker. Now, once it reaches the marker, it can loop in one of two ways. It can either loop like down into the left or down into the right. And um, your guideline will, will show you one of those directions and it kind of like flickers between those two directions as you move it slightly. So you see those are the two possibilities that it can loop in. Now which direction it actually mm -hmm. does loop in is, uh, hold on a sec. Uh, which direction it actually does loop in is dependent on the wind direction. So this is something that you just have to understand. Um, you can think of it like, if 
like as an analogy you can think of like the drone is like you say you're say you're looking at somebody who's skating uh from a top-down view and then like pretend that the marker location is like a pole in the ground and then the guy who's skating is going to uh like skate past the pole and then uh like grab it with his hand and then like swing around it now which direction he swings around it depends on the uh, the direction of the wind so if the like if he's coming at at say like at this angle where it's kind of straight down at the at the uh, at the marker uh, if if the wind is pushing him to the left of the marker then he's going to uh, like he's going to be on the left side coming at the marker and then he's going to swing to the right because he's going to be like he's going to be on the left side of the marker but that makes him swing the opposite direction um, similarly if the if he's if the wind is push if the wind is in the right direction then he's going to swing the left so if, if i shoot it just like this and the wind you see the wind has is more it's uh it has a rightward component so that means it's going to uh, swing to the left. So it'll, it'll go out of the screen. Yeah. Now if the wind was anywhere on the left uh, half, like, like it is now, then it'll swing to the right. So I'll show you how this. So it's, it's swung the other way this time. So uh, basically, if you're going for a bunge SS, uh, there's only you only be able to do it half the time when the wind is in the uh, like say I wanted to bunge the knack. Then I would only be able to do it if the wind is um, like in the right what in the direction it is now. Or if it's because like when when the uh, when the drone meets the marker, it, it's coming at it like at a direct at a diagonal. So if the wind was up, then it would also swing down. So it just kind of swings in the opposite direction. So either when it's right or when it's up, or anything in between, um, that would work. So it, it should work here. Uh, so let me try it then. So. Um, basically, you want it to, uh, or you, you want it to like dig underneath them, right? So, so that like this is where you would want it to dig. Um, I kind of also look at like where it's going uh, vertical and try to match that up with the middle of the land. So you see here, it's kind of like that's the ex that's the middle of the circle that it's looping in. If I just kind of imagine like that's a that place there. Now the wind is very weak, so I don't really have to adjust the marker at all. I'll just fire it. <coughs> Let me see again. Oh. Okay, so there's like a little hole there that it uh, went through. Yeah, and uh, as you saw, like the the drone kept going in circles around the same. Um, in the same circle. Um, yeah, so I think once you understand the mechanics of the looping, you can also apply it to uh, like your S1 and S2. So like if I wanted to say hit this, um, hit this, uh, uh, hit this totem here I could do that right so again it, it'll loop this way because the the wind is um, like the drone is coming at it more at a downward uh, a downward direction so because the wind is more to the right compared to the direction when which the drone is coming at it should loop down into the left so let's let's try and again the wind is not very strong so I don't really have to adjust that much for it just a little bit. Yeah, so I'm able to 
bunch that totem. Um, what else am I missing here? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I can show you a bit more uh, just regular shots. Like how would I how would I hit this guy? Um, oh, okay. I guess we'll talk about how to aim the how to compensate for the wind. So, um, like if you notice the I have the ruler on, but the drone beat doesn't have it doesn't show the ruler when it. Uh, when you're doing any of his shots, which is kind of not not nice, um, but I th like the way that I um, adjust for the wind. Um, I do it mostly by feel, but if you want a, like a, a formula, uh, so like uh, the the marker is also like a set time um, shot, right? So it's like similar to a racer S two or blank S two. It always gets pushed by the wind the same amount because it's just like it flies for a set amount of time so um, the adjustment that you can base your stuff off of if you like if you're familiar with um, my item box method uh, if you're not just you can check out my first tutorial about wind and shooting um, so like the 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 marker doesn't go that high, so it's hard to like calibrate your screen to that um, to the marker. So what I usually do is I just zoom all the way out, and on the, on the phone, kind of the 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 distance for but um, for from one item box to the next. So like the distance from that corner to the the same corner on the next item box. That's like that's eight wind. So if it's two as it is now, you just take a quarter of that, which should be like, which should only be like that much. So it's not that much. So um, how would you adjust it to uh, make sure that you hit? I think I would just about like that much. It's not 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 that much. Okay, well, it was even less than that. Um. But I guess like that that's the uh, that's that's the formula that you can use uh, for for hitting uh, like it, it, it's more for like if you're if you're putting the marker directly on in you you kind of want to use that so like two was only a quarter item box so it's like that much if you're shooting like this how I would usually try to shoot. Um, if you're at this kind of distance, then you would only adjust by like even less than that because, um, like, the, the flight path isn't going to change all that much of, of the flight path of the drone. Uh, let's try that. Yeah, so you see, like a perfect hit there it can do like 240. This is in training, so you get a get a bit of a boost in damage. Okay, let's, uh, let's let's get SS. Okay, so let's see. Can I? Would you be able to bunge him? This wind is like parallel to the. The drone's direction, so I'm not really sure if it'll curve the right way. It's very, it's kind of just, yeah, it's like 50 50. It's a, it could really go either way. Let's just try it and see which way it goes. Uh, it might fly off to the right. Oh no, okay. So, yeah, like this is. <laughs> This is the most satisfying part, is just to bunge people in one hit with, with Drone Beats SS. Uh, I, I almost always go for it if I can, <laughs> like as opposed to damage. Uh, I'll go for the damage if the wind's not letting me bunge, but... Um, um, 
What else? Uh, oh. Like, you can use the S1. Like, say this guy, this totem was an enemy here. Um, a lot of people, they're not aware of it, but like, you know, you can, you can start, it's kind of like Knack or Frog. If they're standing by the, the far edge, you can start bunding them that way, or, or at least blocking their shot. I'll look for your S1. Um, Um, the, yeah, the SS, you can, um, you can actually shield break with the SS if you're using an ice elemental and you hit with one of the uh, earlier, um, part, uh, earlier pellets. Um. I guess we can pretend this guy has a, has a shield. So I, I, I generally use this Ice Elemental level 10 um, for that shield break. If, you, if you're too far, then you're generally not going to be able to shield break him. But if you're just like, if you're fairly close, and you generally will try to be fairly close to the target. Um, yeah, I think this might be a bit too far still to shield break. Yeah, so I hit it with one of the later pellets, which wouldn't have shield broke. Uh, you need to be a bit closer to, to actually get the shield break. Um, what else is there to talk about? Um, typically, when you want to aim your SS, you... Like, I generally try to put the marker slightly under, like, not really, like, directly on him, but maybe slightly farther along the path, simply because the SS will dig the enemy a little bit. Like, it'll drop him a few pixels, and then if your marker is right on him, then the shot can start curving as soon as it reaches the marker, and then, like... Dropping him that few those few pixels can make your subsequent bullets miss. So I try to um, how do I explain this? Like instead of putting it like right on him like that, I'll try to put it like you know this this is S one. So the S S S S would have a lower trajectory. I'll, I'll put it like there or something like that. Right. Uh, Um, I guess we can move on to strategies. So, I think, like, the drone beat is mostly used for his SS. Like, uh, the, uh, at least that's why I use him, because his S1 damage is, is okay, but it, you know, if you're, it's either, like, you're gonna go for damage, or you're gonna go for sky shooting. Uh, it's hard to get both. Now, um, his damage is decent, but it's like, you know, it's it's only, it maxes out about at 240. And it's only a single hit, so it's not going to make use, good use of, uh, like, lightning or, or Thor clouds, right? It can make pretty good use of fist clouds. But, you know, that's only going to increase it, marg increase the damage marginally. Whereas, if you have a multi-shot tank, you can, you know, like, get quite a bit more damage if you're using a lightning cloud or a Thor cloud. So I, I, I tend to think that drone beat is primarily his strength is his SS. Um, and you know what uh, what you should be doing with him is you should be trying to get SS as soon as possible. And you know the fastest way to do that is to use Coroni on a drop and go for either a super sky risky shot or a super sky tornado shot. If there's a NATO, then you could get the NATO. Otherwise, you're probably going to be doing risky shot. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. 
Let's do medium since we have unlimited time there. Um, let's count this. Yeah, so depending on the map, uh, the risky shot may or may not be possible. So you need uh, a lot of, um, you need a lot of, uh, you need a lot of clearance around the target, especially behind them, in order for your, your shot to, uh, to get both super sky and risky, right? So like, you see how it, the shot is coming from behind him? So if, if he was like, if his back was to a wall, then you pretty much can't do any, you can't get a risky shot on. Now, like generally this distance is, is close enough to get a risky. Um, but you do want to be careful in that drone beats uh, shots all have quite a large explosion range. So if like, especially now, since this shot is going through uh, um, an explosion cloud, I definitely want to hit it on the back side of the target because if I hit it like on the top, for, well, at first it's kind of hard to, to hit it just right on the top at, at that angle. Um, but second, it might damage me because of the explosion radius. So I'll want to shoot it there. Right? And then I can, you know, six wins. So that's like, uh, you know, like there ish. Um, you can also like, you don't have to aim for his back. You can also aim for like anywhere here is fine. It'll still, uh, it'll still hit the same place. So there's a lot of leeway in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, aiming. You don't have to be super precise, but it, it certainly does help if you are more precise. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's basically with drone bead, uh, you want to get a, a SS as soon as possible because you're not really doing that good damage. And, uh, and then you want to, you know, you want to kill people with the SS preferably, uh, either through damage or through bunging them. So again, going for another risky. Now, if there is something behind them, there are certain ways you can, um, so this is kind of like a trick. Um, you can make the, the shot loop so that it comes down on him at a different angle. Uh, well, I'll show you here. So the wind, it, it, the wind needs to allow it. So. Uh, the same the, the same theory applies like which direction the shots gonna loop because the shots coming from like a left direction and the wind is down that means it's gonna loop up right so it's gonna make a loop de loop and then it's gonna come down uh, it'll try to find the marker again and finally it'll hit him so if I shoot like that it should work um, I'll need to adjust a bit for the wind. Okay, let's try that. So this is kind of like a, yeah. <laughs> so that th that makes it come at a different angle. If if there just happens to be like a rock right behind him, and you can kind of get around it. Um. If the wind was the other way, then I would have shot it slightly differently. So if the wind is what it is now, or what it was. Uh, so here, I I think it would loop. Yeah, it would probably loop down because it's coming slightly at a downward angle. Actually, it's 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 hard to tell. But anyway, like there, I it looped and then it came um like it looped up and then it came down. If the wind was up, then it would immediately loop down. So it would be like that. So I'd probably shoot it like there or maybe there, like that. Anyway, I'll show you the shield break. Um, let's see. So I think 
Something like that would probably hit him. Let me adjust for wind. Yeah. So as you see, you can see you, you can get a full shield break with the ice elemental. That's why I would recommend using it, but if you're not very confident on getting the shots to hit, then you know any um, attack uh, pet would you know would probably be best. Uh, okay, so here this the the wind is favorable for me to bunge this uh, frog here. So let's let's do it. So I want to make sure that the center is at the middle of the enemies or the middle of the land. And then five, just make sure I'm fully zoomed out. It's going to be there. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, could potentially do it out to the sky as well. The other frog, I mean. <laughs> um. Something like there. Uh, just by five. Yeah, so as you can see, once you kind of get the hang of it, you know how the looping mechanic works. It's not that hard to get these bunches off. It looks real flashy. It's not actually that hard uh, once you figure out how to how it works. Um, uh, what else can I talk about? So, like, who does drone be pair well with? Um, it doesn't really pair particularly well with anybody. I would say if if you uh, if if your team uh, relies on like tanks that dig or make holes, I would say drone beat is not good for that because he's, because he requires um, the enemy to be like kind of out in the open to get the risky shot. If they're in a hole, then it's very difficult for your drone beat to get that risky on them, right? So. You know, if it's like, if you're playing Lightning or you're playing like BK Dark Rain, I uh, probably wouldn't use Drone Beat in that team. And pretty much every other team, he works just fine. Um, and like, you know, you can use those that trick about with the looping to kind of help hit somebody in a hole. But I mean, I wouldn't really rec I wouldn't really rely on it because it's not that easy to do. Okay, so let's try to just do this guy. Yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you want to, like, you want to get the one turn SS, I think. That's kind of how he, his game plan works. Is, um, uh, you want to get the SS as soon as possible. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to take too much damage in the process, right? Because he's so he's so squishy. Uh, okay. So another thing I guess I could talk about is if you um, sometimes his his drone will like fly in the opposite direction. You see, uh, depending on like what angle you're shooting it at it'll fly either left or right but sometimes it'll go in the opposite direction of where you think it's going to go and that has to do with the wind so i find like sometimes if the wind is is left and i it seems like i'm shooting or sorry if the wind is right like i'm shooting now and 
and I'm shooting t and it looks like the mar or the guide line is going to the right, the wind can actually make it go to the left. I'm not sure if it will this time, but let's see. Okay, this time it didn't. Um, but that is something to keep in mind because if it does go in the wrong direction, you're basically gonna hit yourself because you're going for a risky and your, your own body is in the way. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure how that how that mechanic works or why it looks like that, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I recommend you give it a shot if you um, maybe you got it in by pulling the recent uh, pack that just came out, the pack number four or N nine pack, Dragon Pack, whatever it was called. Uh, it's uh, quite fun to play and. Uh, you know, you know, you can do some flashy stuff like that that most people don't even know about. Um, so yeah, like, uh, which way will it curve here? Well, the wind is up into the left, and because it's coming down at a uh, down into the left angle, it should curve down and to the right. So here I'm actually kind of too far to uh, to get a a bunch. Okay, maybe I can move. I'll just move closer. I guess. Don't want to fall off here. Uh, well, let's just see. Oh, actually shot it too far there. Okay, so like if you're if you're going for damage. Um, and you're like at this kind of distance like what I talked about like if you put the marker right on him um, it some of the bullets might not hit so you want to like put it slightly through him just so that it, the bullets stay straight as um, they slightly dig him down and you're gonna compensate for the wind Yeah, so 400 damage uh, unreduced on a shield type, but it's about like, like 450 on if it was uh, if it wasn't shield. So it can do like up to 450 unreduced. It's pretty strong uh, SS. Uh, let's try to bunch him. Let me do it. Okay, so the wind is it's gonna loop in a funny way. Um, yeah, what would, what would you do here? Maybe you could do it like this. Go from the other way? <laughs> that even work? Uh, where do, where do I need to hit? Probably like there. If I wanted to hit him. Now let's try it. <clears throat> so it's gonna curve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like most of the time you wouldn't be able to get that shot off unless there was a hole. You know, right right there. <laughs> But yeah, I guess that's just showing the different options that you potentially have with drone beat. Uh, 
Um, I think that's pretty much all. Oh yeah, like teammates. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need a penguin, but it is really nice. Uh, if you know, especially if you're using um a starter tank that you know that can run penguin pretty well. Like I'd say, like Trico runs it pretty well. I like J Frog, although J Frog puts people in holes, so you don't really want to use J Frog with them. Um. Yeah, I think like this team, if you just had a Trico Desto drone beat, uh, I've, I've used it a lot in pro battle. It's, you know, it's, it does really well. Uh, the drone beat is, uh, I mean, uh, the drone beat's not really st the star, but it can certainly win you games that you wouldn't otherwise have just because of the one hit KO potential with the, uh, with the Bunge SS. So it's not. You know, it, it kind of plays like armor in a way. You uh, you drop a side item, you go for risky, you use your really strong SS. Uh, Drone Beast is more fragile, more of a glass cannon, but you can hit harder than armor, right? Like, I don't think armor really one-shots anyone with uh, SS anymore. But Drone Beast can with, uh, with a bunch, so that's a reason to use him. And... Uh, yeah, not a lot of people know how he works, so they're you're less likely to get somebody who's playing around your drone beat because there are there's a lot of ways you can position to play around drone beat, but people don't really know that right now. So if you, you know, if you're viewing this tutorial, then you probably know a bit more than the average person, or a lot more than the average person. All right, so that pretty much does it. Yeah, hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let me know if you want any other tutorials. Uh, I don't make a lot because I don't have that many topics. I think that would be useful. But, uh, you know, if there's a certain tank that you want to know more about, um, drop me a message either on the YouTube comments or you can reach me on Discord. Um, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks for watching.